Hi, Terra fans. This is Terra Solo Gamer. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this video out right here in Crescentia. Today we're going to be going over the Halloween event. It has begun today. Uh, it'll be going on for a few weeks here. I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, I know some of my people, when I put out the October event, some of us were surprised Halloween event wasn't even mentioned at that point. Uh, and I know uh, one of my regular reviewers, Jessica Meyer, uh, had mentioned that she just started playing Terra in November last year. So last year she got to see all the Halloween decorations, but it was already too late for her to actually participate in the event. And uh, I know Gamma Router 13, uh, or Gamma Router 13, how you pronounce it, uh, he and I were actually talking back and forth about some of our favorite things about the Halloween events. So we, some of us have been looking forward to this. Uh, as you can see, most of the towns you're going to be in, you can see the big pumpkin heads. Uh, they were glowing earlier. Why are they not glowing? I don't know. Uh, anyway, there we go. So I'm in Crescentia because it's going to be... Uh, actually, I meant to start here. I want to show you the event announcement first. And you can always just go into your regular menu here, go to event, go to event in progress. That'll take you to the web browser. I, I normally want to look at this on my um, computer, but for the purposes of the video, I'll get to the October event in another video. That's separate. Uh, that, that's a different October event from what I already covered. It's more stuff. And we have new gear came out, that whole different thing. All right. So what I'm looking for for this video is the Halloween event. It's an annual event. Uh, they have it every single year. At least they have for the past few years. I know of anyway. All right. And it began after maintenance on the 12th, so basically the 13th. Today is the uh, 13th. And it's supposed to end before maintenance on November 9th. So you got about, what, three weeks, almost, almost a month. Um, and they're announcing the details. Various rewards from the Halloween Moon Gourd Pie. And again, uh, 13 October uh, until before maintenance on the 9th of November. Event one is Gordo's Trick or Treat. You get random rewards from Troublemaker Hollow Gordo that appears in the village. Now, uh, it'll start in a few hours, so I'm going to end up having to cut my video and then pick up again later. Uh, what happens is in certain towns, a whole bunch of these Gordo monsters appear, and you just go around and kill them real quick. You know, it's kind of like the Santa event. You don't have to worry about them hitting hurting you or anything, but when you're killing them, those are some of your potential drops right there. Pumpkin Pie, Castanica Midnight Oil, Superior Noctinium Elixir, that, that's a nice little thing right there, and Event Gordo's Moon Gourds. All right, you're going to need those Event Gordo's Moon Gourds uh, to go along with some crafting that we'll get to for some items that you're going to receive through your parcel post every day. But we'll be getting to those. Now, as far as the towns in which all those Gordo's spawn, where you're going to go and farm them uh, for all those drops... Those are the names of the villages right there in which they spawn. A whole bunch of them. you got a lot of options of where you can go. So if you need to pause the video or whatever and be like, ooh, let me jump on now. Well, there you go. All right. The Gordo spawn times. They will spawn in those areas weekdays, North America, uh, starting at 1600 to 2100. So, what, five hours worth. Uh, Pacific time. Now, I'm in the eastern time zone, east part of the United States, and I forget I'm either three or four hours ahead of them Pacific time. So for me, it's either going to be eight o'clock or seven o'clock or eight o'clock tonight. But I believe eight because most of these uh, events normally start at eight o'clock for me. So I'll find out in a few hours. Uh, and, and, and if you're from the United States, you're not familiar with the, the uh, 24 hour clock that, that a lot of the rest of the world actually uses. Uh, 1600 is 4 p.m. 2100 is 9 p.m. And, of course, if you're in Europe, you already know the 24-hour time because I lived in Berlin, Germany for over five years, and the 24-hour time is typical in many other countries. All right. Now, on the weekends, uh, it runs, instead of just five hours, it runs for 12 hours. Okay? So, North America is going to be on the Pacific time from 1,200 to 2,400 or noon to midnight uh, for Americans there. And, again, Europe, you understand 24-hour time, so there you go. Asia, Japan, there's gives you different time zones there. And event two, daily gift delivery of event Gordo's campfire by parcel post. That's what I mentioned earlier. The first logged in character of your account will get the daily gift by parcel post. You only get, well, you get one parcel post per day, which includes three Gordo campfires. 
At least mine today included three. I, I think I think it's probably going to be three every day. Um, Gordon's Campfire is used to cook moon gourds to create the event Halloween moon gourd pie. Now, as I mentioned, as you're farming all those gourdos on the towns during those you know few hour periods, some of the drops will include moon gourds. And then you will use those with the campfires you're going to get through your daily parcel post to uh, create these, like, Halloween moon gourd pies. And then, oh, I'm actually getting ahead of myself. Event three, cook the moon gourd on event Gordo's campfire. You're going to need 100 moon gourds. You'll be pouring those from all the, the, moon, the gourdos in all the towns during those particular hours that we mentioned. You need 100 to go with one Gordo's campfire. That will create one event Halloween moon gourd pie. Sort of the same basic kind of concept as the fishing tournaments, you know, where you get a certain number of, of baits per day, and then you go fishing to get this the essence, and you go do a um, vanguards to get the, the mana infused metals. It's the same kind of concept. Except in this case, you're going to get your, um, I believe it's going to be three a day. I got three this morning. The uh, campfires in your parcel post. And then during certain hours, you're going to go and farm the Gordos in the towns until you get 100 Gordos moon gourds to combine with one of your Gordo campfires to make a Halloween moon gourd pie. And then when you open the pie, okay, there's a fixed reward of 25 Halloween candies. And we'll be talking about the Halloween candies in a little bit. And then a random reward from the following rewards. You got several different kind of, I'm not going to read them all to you. You can read for yourself. Uh, you got some masks there. Um, Halloween costumery smart box. So there's potential for that sort of costume. And possibly some enchanting chests or whatever. I, I don't really hope for those. Or they have an outfit or something. Uh, crafters Cure All, I always love. I never complain about Crafters Cure All because I do a lot of gathering and crafting. Um, you can see you know, Tenement Elixirs. Vampire Noble costume box. I'm sure that's a popular thing a lot of people hope for. The. Halloween Mummy costume box, maybe. Vampire Countess costume box. I'm sure a lot of people probably keep their fingers crossed for that one, hoping they get it. But those are some of your potential random drops once you make those special pies. All right. You cannot trade nor store in the bank all the items except for some. All right. Now, I will tell you, uh, and, and I'll show you later, the uh, the Gordo's Campfire. No, it, Whichever character you log into the first time that day, when it's time for that to drop, that character will receive it in parcel post, but it is bankable for your personal bank, not, not your guild bank. So it, what, don't worry about what character you log in that day. When you get your campfires to your parcel post, you can drop those in your personal bank, and one of your other characters can pick it up if they're the ones who are collecting all of them. So, so at least those uh, are bankable. But you can see some stuff can't store in the bank, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, Halloween candy event, Gordo's Moon Gourd, Gordo's Campfire event, Halloween Moon Gourd Pie, Moon Gourd Pie, sorry, will be deleted during the regular maintenance on 24 November. So the, I forget what day we said it ended, 9 November, I think we said, uh, but the, the items will still be available until 24 November. I, I would be sure I'd do whatever I need to do with it by the 23rd, though, just be on the safe side, don't, don't mess up your time in there. So, so those items, the pies and whatever, if you have them already in your inventory, uh, even after the 9th, you'll still have them until the 24th, but then by the 24th, they're going to disappear. So be sure you use them before that time. You can trade Halloween candy with a variety of items during the Halloween festival via the Halloween NPCs. And we will get to the Halloween NPCs. Uh, I think they call them Halloween guides. And some items not included in the tooltip can be dropped as a reward from the pumpkin pie. Okay, so there might be some other rewards you get from the pumpkin pie. All right, and that is it for the announcement. And again, you can always go to terra-console.com. That's the official uh, website for Terra. All right, and now here she is. And I'm going to first, because I, I, I automatically grabbed it this morning because I just grab stuff as soon as I log in and I see something waiting on me. Uh, each day for the campfire things, you're looking for a parcel post that says trick or treat. And you see here, I got three Gordo's campfires. You can see the yellow text down on the left, you know, near the near the bottom enclosed items. I already pulled it out uh, because I was just not even thinking this morning about doing a video later. But I got three today, and I'm assuming we're going to get three every day. But you'll only get it one time, you know, one partial post per day. Again, it's kind of like the, the fishing tournaments with the baits. All right, so 
Return to Terror for Halloween, and they give you the times again there on Universal Time. And noon to midnight on weekends, hunt them down, take them out. Use your chance campfire to cook the moon gourd, he drops into the moon gourd pies. So those pies can be smashed up with special rewards. And that was what we just went over for everything. And that's trick or treat. You'll get that once a day. We had maintenance rewards this morning, so I got a bunch of those things uh, sitting around. And you will see Halloween rewards. I actually went into the uh, uh, the dungeon a couple times already before I did this film. So I've collected a few little Halloween candies. I kind of suck at the game, so I don't get a lot of them. But I do get some. You see, I got some Halloween candies. We'll get to that. Now, the reason I started in Crescentia is because uh, some of you may be very low level. You may not have even done Bastion Look yet. I don't know. So... Crescentia, it may be where you still are if you're a low-level person. But in the vast majority of the towns that are on the map that you can go to either by a Pegasus or by a Fast Travel, the, a lot of these towns are going to have a Halloween guide, Alonia. Now, you, you'll recall it mentioned that you can trade your candies to this person. Now, it, you can see on the map up there where we are in Crescentia. We're right here next to the trade broker, right in the middle of town. Can't miss her. She's right there. If you're in Crescentia... This is where she is. And, okay, she's talking about Eldritch Academy, which is where you go for the dungeon. We'll get to that. But right now, you'll see we have two options, accessories or teleport. If you go into accessories, once you've gathered up some candies, uh, you can see that there are different masks. You have a big bad wolf mask right there. I'm not going to read each of them to you. But basically, the regular masks are going to cost you 100 candies. So you're going to be trying to gather up 100 candies. All right, these are all regular masks. I'll scroll through them kind of slowly so you get an opportunity to see what they are. All right, now we get to the paper mask. This is a Castanic Mail paper mask. You might have a uh, an Elon or whatever, and you want to buy this for 30 candies. The paper masks are all 30 candies, okay? So they're cheaper than the regular masks, but they don't look as good. Uh, now, you notice on the regular masks, no sale value, and you can't store it in a guild bag. However, the regular masks are tradable, and I know when I've gotten extras, I've normally sold them through the trade broker, uh, and I'm going to show you the trade broker in a minute because there are a bunch of them out there for sale already from people who've been getting them, uh, because I don't really like covering my characters up with masks. My characters, I usually like their faces to show, but, you know, we'll get to that too. Uh, another paper mask, I'm just going slightly slowly. You can always pause the video. Now you have Jack O'Lantern glasses. These cannot be traded. So if you buy these, there are 100 candies, no sale value, cannot store them in the guild bank. So you can put it in your regular bank. So if one character ends up, you know, trading in candies and getting it, as long as you don't put it on and bind it, because it is bind on a quip, not pick up, but a quip. So you can actually pull it out of the, you know, grab it from her, toss it in your bank. Just be sure you don't put it on and bind it to yourself. And I, I don't know if I covered the paper mass, but those cannot be traded. So you won't find those on the trade broker. You can put them in your bank, though as long as you haven't bound it to your character yet. All right. Now let's continue on with what masks are available. If I'm, I'm doing it kind of slow, but kind of fast, because there's no point in sitting here reading all of them. But I want you to see what's available, and you can always pause the video if you have to. All right, so now we're back to the beginning. Regular, higher quality masks, 100 candies. You can trade them. Sell them to the trade broker. You can put them in your own bank, not in the guild bank. All the paper masks, only 30 candies. Uh, you cannot trade them, so you're not going to sell them to the trade broker. You can put them in your own bank, cannot put them in the guild bank. And then you have the special jack-o'-lantern glasses, 100 candies, cannot be traded, so you're not going to sell it through the uh, trade broker. It has no sale value, so you can't sell it to an NPC merchant. And you cannot store it in the guild bank, but apparently you can store it in your own bank. So you can drop it in there for another character to pick up. Okay. Now, when we were talking about her, we have accessories or teleport. If you hit teleport, excuse me, that will take you to Eldritch Academy. But I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, because first, I'm going to show you this. If you go to any trade broker, you can do a search. Searches can be done with partial words. So I'm just going to put in mask. Now, you can see we got like the famished skeleton mask, fresh pumpkin mask. Uh, I can't remember if Death's Head was one of them from this thing or not. There might be something different. I don't recall seeing Death's Head in the thing. Uh, but if you look at the bottom, 
You see the A button allows you to preview. If you're on, I'm on Xbox. If you're on PlayStation, it'll tell you what button to hit. Just look for the word preview at the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to hit preview, and ta-da, if I want to know what one of those masks looks like before I purchase it from one of the uh, NPCs there, then I can actually go into the trade broker and pick one that's up for sale and just preview it. You know, you, you don't have to buy it from the trade broker if you've got enough candies to buy it from the NPC person. Okay, so that was uh, Famished Skeleton, Big Bad Wolf. You got Fresh Pumpkin. You got Stylish Pumpkin. I'm not going to do a full spin on that one. I don't think that's it. Oh, was Monster Mask one? I don't know. But you can always do your own preview. Go to the trade broker. Now, she has a couple special ones. Uh, like I said, I don't usually do the masks, and actually most of the ones I got in previous years, I've either sold, destroyed, or done whatever. But there are two she she kept um, that were on that list that we did when we went to the event uh, description that told you the different kind of masks you may end up getting or, or other types of rewards from these pumpkin pie dealing with bobs. There we go. One of them is the bear skull mask. Nice, fancy, grayish sort of thing. And she also has the blue scream skull. And I happen to keep these two because they were the two that I might be most likely to wear at some point. Okay, it's kind of hard to see that one with the, uh, the building in the backdrop. I think I need a slightly darker background. Let's try this. Yeah, you can see the blue flames a little better uh, with that background there. All right, so, so if you want to know at least those two, the bear skull mask and the blue flame mask, uh, that is what they look like. I'll go ahead and leave that on for now, just because it's Halloween time. And we're doing the uh, Halloween thing. All right, now, that's Trade Broker is how you can go preview some of the masks. Uh, the Halloween Guide is where you can go and buy... Uh, those items, masks, Halloween glasses, whatever, uh, with your candies, once you win your candies. And, of course, she can teleport you to the event. Now, before we teleport to the event, I'm going to go to my map, my village atlas, actually. Okay, we are currently in Crescentia. That's where I decided to start this, just, you know, especially for low-level people. This is probably where you still are if you haven't even completed Bashi and Loki yet or whatever. Now... Like I said, a lot of the towns are going to have that same person. So what I'm going to do is each of the major four cities, first I'm going to go to Velka. I'm going to show you where to find the Halloween Guide. Any of the other towns, you just have to search yourself because I'm not going to go to every single town and show you where they're at. All right, so now we're going to Velka. Taking off this away. I rarely come to Velika, so I'm not really sure what's the shortest way, but I know how to get there. And you'll notice the uh, pumpkin decorations and stuff along the way. Uh, that's going to be in pretty much every town you go to. Oops. Got a wee bit stuck there. Okay. And you can always follow the map in the upper right corner to see where I'm going. I'm sort of kind of heading towards the uh, Velika console office, but I'm not actually going there. You can see her right there. Same Halloween guide, Bologna, same, you can buy the accessories from her, same stuff, and she can teleport you to the event. So if you're in Velika or near the area, this is where you can go to see her. That's Velika. And Alanthea. Head over there real quick. Because, again, I do want to show, I wanted to start in Crescentia for all those real low-level characters who maybe this is your first time playing, you're not really familiar with the map and all that. At least you know where to go in Crescentia if you haven't completed Bash in the Loki yet. Or maybe recently completed it, but you know your way around uh, Crescentia better than you do Velka. Okay, now, I, I landed here. I, I could either take a Pegasus here or use Fast Travel if I have a lead. 
And I'm right here. Right here on this platform, there's the Halloween god Alonia in Alamanthea. And again, same it's, it's got the same exact thing for all of them. They they no different. Okay, that was Alamanthea. Or however you pronounce it. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. I don't care. And let's go check out Kayator. So at least no matter which continent you're in, north or south, Aaron or Shara you'll be able to find your way to one of these Halloween gods. And, yep. I'm going to be heading toward the command center, even though I'm not actually going in the command center, but I'm going very, 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 very close to the command center. Of course, if you've done some of the uh, higher level quests and whatnot, and many of you will recognize Yunari, she's right there entrance to the command center, but the Halloween guide's right over here, just a few feet away from Yunari. Again, same exact stuff, you can buy your stuff from her, and she can teleport you to the event. Okay, so if you look in the map in the upper right corner, we're right next to the command center entrance, that's where you can find her in Kayator. And one more that I'm going to show you is, of course, High Watch. Okay, some of you who do the uh, Vanguard stuff, you may be familiar with this area right here. We can enter Ace Dungeons and that sort of thing. I, I, I'm still devastated that they took away Castle Aranea and uh, Celestial Arena. I used to love those, but they got rid of them a couple months ago. I don't know why, but they did. But Alonia, the Halloween God, is right here. Okay, you can see on the upper map right there where we are. And you can see we're real close to the Vanguard thing. So, of course, if you're, you know, going to your Vanguard request and do the one for, like, Ace Dungeon, whatever, it'll teleport you right over there. And you just run right over here. And here she is. Now, again, you can buy uh, the little masks and stuff from her. Or, now, we'll go ahead and teleport to Eldritch Academy. Yes. And you can do this with any of them that I show you where to find. And again, there's other towns like Crescentia where she's going to be present, but I'm not going to go to every single town on the map and look for her. Okay, we're standing right here inside Eldritch Academy. For those of you who do not know, it's also possible to get there by going to Pora Elenu. Uh, go inside the main building to the local teleportal, and you can teleport to Eldritch Academy. I'm not going to bother with that because I've shown you so many ways to get here already. All right, and you're going to see the witch detective, Titiana, the Halloween party planner. Okay, so go ahead and select her. All right, she's a sleuth extraordinaire, whatever, whatever. All right, now you'll notice it says you may enter this dungeon only five times daily. I've already been in here tw twice today, uh, five times the max. You also notice it says this is a three player instance. I always do it by myself. Because I'm a solo player. That's what solo players do. Do it by myself. Now, if you go in with two other people and you have three of you, you're probably going to end up getting higher score, better candy, you know, more candies and whatever to go in exchange for mass. So, nothing wrong with doing it with uh, three of you going in, because that's actually how it's designed. But if you're a solo player like me, you're just going to go in by yourself. I'm going to go ahead and select the party bouncer there, and it simply tells me to keep the Chihuangis away from the candy. And if I see Gordo, kick him out, because they didn't invite him to the party. All right, so now I can go back to the previous page, and now I'm going to go ahead and teleport into the Harvest Festival Hall. Because that's our little event dungeon thing, where we can go and earn extra candies to trade in for masks and whatnot. Okay. Now, if you see the exit teleportal there, that, that's the way you're going. You're not actually going to exit right now, but Serena, the headmistress, is right here. Uh, before I see her, I do want to go over here and point out, this is a candy cannon, or some kind of cannon, whatever. And you can see over here, we have a second cannon over there. 
And then right over yonder, you got a third cannon over there. Okay, three cannons because you can have three people playing max. All the candy on the floor, big old candy basket in the middle. Thing is, you're going to have all these critters coming in here, walking around in circles, and then coming over to your candy basket, stealing your candy. And when they steal your candy, then they're going to be trying to walk off and leave through one of the doorways. Your goal is to let as few of them steal your candy as possible. Okay? So you're going to be shooting these cannons and trying to kill as many, as many of them as you can to keep them away from your candy. All right, so now let's see Serena, the headmistress. I'm talking about the decorations. Right, you can read that if you want. Click on the thing. Now, whether I'm scared or not, the Halloween event is about to begin. Are you ready? Of course, I'm going to click ready. I could click cancel, but that's just meaning I'm going to do nothing. So, ready. Okay, now I'm going to go to the cannon. It's highlighted. Now I can hit use. And you can see at the bottom, it's... It, if you see the, the circle there, that's my aiming circle. That's as far as it goes. I can't go any further than that. I can't reach the other side. But if you have three people here who are on those other cannons on the other side of the room, they, or even just two of you, I guess, would cover a lot more area at least. Um, the two or three of you is going to cover a lot more area. Because with only one cannon, you can see I can only cover about half of the room. And I hit the wrong button. Let me remount. There we go. Okay, I'm not going to go for them because they're going to be out of my range too quickly. I think go for the ones that are coming up on this side. Yeah, I actually killed one. Again, I suck at this game like I do most of the annual games. But I do enough to get some candy so that I can eventually buy a mask or something. Oh, come on. Did I seriously not hit him enough times? And you see the little red bar over their heads. Some of them take a lot of shooting to kill. And of course, some of them take a lot of shooting because I'm only hitting them half the time when I'm hitting my trigger thing. Most of them I'm missing. Okay, killed that one. Got some kill points. Now you see the diamond over the head of that guy right there? That means he's stealing my candy. He's on his way out. Um... But by the time they've done that, usually I can't hit them enough times before they exit to kill them. So I just focus on trying to kill more of the ones that are still in the room. That's just me. Because, again, I kind of suck at these games. And as you can see, it takes some of them quite a few hits to kill them. And of course, I'm trying to kill them before he gets to my candy. And you see a whole bunch of them with diamonds over their head. That means they're all stealing my candy and leaving with it. Oh, my goodness. And, and you see, they're also exiting with my candy over on the other side of the room. And that's what I was saying. If you actually have two or three people playing, you probably do better uh, because you can cover more area. Okay, see the message? Boo! Gordo approaches. Okay, Gordo is getting ready to come into the room. I think he usually comes from the far side over there. I'm still, I don't see him yet. While I'm waiting on him, I keep hitting this guy. Oh, there goes Gordo from the right. Okay. That pumpkin head thing right there, that's Gordo. You can see Gordo's name above his head. Trying to kill him. There we go. Now, as soon as I kill him, everyone turns like icy. I think that makes them a little more vulnerable to my hits. Not saying for sure, but I think so. It has to do something. I mean, it turns them to ice, and I don't think they would turn them to ice for no reason. Either that or it did some damage to them automatically so that I don't have to do as much damage. I'm not quite sure what the ice effect does to them, but it is temporary. Pretty soon it's going to wear off. I just try to shoot as many as I can while they're icy. Icy has worn off now.
Yeah. I don't even know if I'm doing any damage after the stolen candy or not, because it doesn't look like it's doing anything. I'm not sure. I'm just waiting for that timer to run down, people, because I'm getting kind of tired of this. Now, now, again, the diamond over the head means you're stealing your candy. It doesn't look like I do damage if I hit them after they've done that, though. So let me just keep trying to kill the ones who haven't stolen my candy yet. Try to get more kill points up there. And, of course, as they leave with my candy, my kill points drop. You know, I lose kill points. And, of course, the more of my kill, then I gain kill points from that. So it's like the other uh, annual festival-type games that you do. You, you try to do certain things, but you have the enemies doing other things, and you lose points when they get what they want. But you got to kill them to gain points. Okay, it looks like... Okay, I thought we were done. There we go. All right, I got a total of 334 points. It was enough for me to get three rewards, which is okay. And it says, thank you for saving our candy basket, you know. So, there you go. And it says they'll send a reward by mail. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and dismount. And you see my parcel post again, Halloween rewards. I got three Halloween candies, so go ahead and accept that. And now it's in my inventory. And we've already uh, gone through where you go to buy them with the Halloween gods. Now, you notice if you go to Serena right now, there's no option to start again. You have to actually exit the uh, dungeon first. And then once you're out, you can come back in and then you can uh, start over again. And you see on the right, party bouncer, I, I, I forgot to mention it earlier. That pops up while you're in there playing uh, and, and, you know, shooting the monsters. That, that's your, your side quest there. But now uh, I have completed. On, I'm just trying to find a nice background so you can actually read it. Nah, it's close enough. Uh, level 10 Eldritch Academy grounds. And, and because it says level 10 Eldritch Academy, I'm assuming if you're at least level 10, you can play this game. Because it says level 10 right there. So, you know, give it a try. Uh, Gordo Traces kicked Gordo out of the party. Now you can see I have the yellow asterisk, meaning I did complete the mission itself. So I see her, and she has the yellow asterisk over her head. Same person we saw to go in. The uh, Witch Detective Titiana Halloween Party Planner. Some of these words are kind of hard to read against some of these backgrounds, but do the best you can. All right, and you can see the party bouncer. I'm going to click on that for the quest thing. And she's going to give me an extra Halloween candy. That's my reward for, for completing the mission. Ta-da! And I actually ended up with two. I think that's because I have Elite Gold. Some of my gifts double. I don't know. But that is the um, Party Bouncer. Okay? You can see... Yep. And I can go back in a grand total... There you go. I can go in a grand total each day five times. Uh, and I've already been there three times now, so, so I could actually go in two more times if I want. And I believe that's it for the Halloween events, uh, because we did cover... Where you go to spend your candies. We covered the dungeon itself, how to get those candies. Um, oh, I'm saying that's it for this part. Uh, the other part is, of course, going and farming Gordos in the towns. However, that's not going to start for at least like a couple more hours or so for me. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and stop recording now, and then I'll pick it up again in a few hours once the Gordos appear in the towns. And we'll continue on with that part of it. So I will see you in a few hours. Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, we now have a whole bunch of Gordos right here in Crescentia. Our uh, decorations, the, the pumpkin heads are glowing and everything. Everything looks all cool. Now, uh, we had talked before about the campfire things, and you're going to have to gather drops from these guys to be able to use those. So all you're going to do is just start killing them. Oh, might take more than one hit. Oh, okay. And... I don't know if I can gather them. Oh, I can gather them. Good. And I forgot to get my pet out. This is much easier if you have a um, pet that has auto loot. 
Now you can see how many moon gourds I'm getting sometimes two at a time, five at a time. And, and I should also have the ability to, to get some other drops that were on the list earlier. There goes some Castanica Midnight Oil. And again, uh, we showed earlier that a whole bunch of the towns, I, I can't get too far away from my pet or it'll stop gathering. Uh, a, a bunch of the towns were listed on that list, so you can go to any of those towns and find these gordos. Uh, I'm on the East Coast, the Eastern Time Zone in the United States, and apparently um, it starts at 7 p.m. for me, so it'll be going on for the next few hours. Uh, it showed the Pacific time on the thing before, and I couldn't remember if I was three or four hours ahead of them. Apparently, I'm three hours. Oh, and I got a squash pie there. behind here I believe they're usually a uh, whoops a bunch of them back here yep and all I'm doing is killing me some gordos and getting me some drops Probably help my little buddy out here a little bit because, uh, as you can see, you can get quite a few drops pretty quickly. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do this forever and bore you to death, but uh, I do want to gather up. I'd like to gather up at least a hundred of those things just so I can uh, use it with my campfire thing. And it'd also be nice we got it. There goes another Castanica Midnight Oil. And I was going to say it'd be nice if we catch a, a few more drops as well. We got here oh, another Casanica Midnight Oil. Get quite a few of those. And I was going to say, I think there's usually a few right outside of town. I thought it would be more, but these will do. Sneak of Midnight Oil. Right. Let me go into my menu really quickly. Doop, doop, doop. Uh, squash pie recovers 100% of your HP. So that's a handy thing to have if you want to use that for recovering HP. I think the Castanica Midnight Oil is in here. There it is. Castanica Midnight Oils increases your crafting speed of all equipment by 50% for one hour. So if you do a lot of crafting and stuff, well, then there you go. Castanica Midnight Oil comes in kind of handy. That's a couple moon gourds. Now let me see how many moon gourds I have. I think those will be here. Whoops, there it is. And I have exactly 300. Perfect. Okay, and it tells you, you know, cook it on the event Gordo's Campfire to create a Halloween moon gourd pot. Then you can squash it open to receive Halloween candy as well as a variety of other rewards, including, and there's a list of stuff that you might get. I'll pause for a moment, let you look. You can always pause the video. All right, now, if you recall earlier, I showed you that in my parcel post, I received three Gordo's Campfires. You should get one of those every day, and I believe it's going to have three. And it takes 100, and you can see um, uh, 100 Moon Gourds to combine with one campfire. And as you can see, I have exactly 300 for three campfires. So this is perfect. That worked out perfectly. So let's make one. Go ahead and craft it. 
That gave me one Halloween moon gourd pie. Here comes my second Halloween moon gourd pie. And here comes my third Halloween moon gourd pie. So now I have three event Halloween moon gourd pies. And again, it tells you the possible rewards right there. If you want to pause the video, go right ahead. All right, so now I'm going to pop one open. All right, Chantings and Chanting Chests and 25. You're always going to get the 25 Halloween candies. So that's going to help you build up towards trading with the uh, Halloween gods that I've been showing you. And Champions and Chanting Chests. Now another one. A Metamorphic Emblem Chest and 12, 25 Halloween candies. Oh, and I got an, a, a Lurie Giant Killer Mask and 25 Halloween candies. Now I'm not a big mask person, but if you want to see the Giant Killer Mask... I have to soul bind it first. Go ahead and do our thingy. All right. That's what the Al Lori Giant Killer Mask looks like for those of you who like visual demonstrations. All right. Now, I have not gotten a new parcel post yet. All right. So I'm going to put my little pet away. And now, should I choose to, I should be able to go ahead and kill some more and collect the uh, Moon Gorge if I want to go ahead and get a, a head start for tomorrow. So with her uh, funny little headgear thing still intact, I believe we have covered uh, everything as far as the Halloween event goes. I showed you, uh, at least in the four major cities and uh, here in Crescentia, where exactly to find the Halloween guides. Uh, showed you the actual dungeon to go in and shoot the little cannons to uh, fight Gordo and the, all the monsters who are trying to steal your candy from there. Uh, showed you what the different items are, the masks and things that you can buy from the um, Halloween guides. And uh, shown you a visual of some of the uh, masks that she happens to have. And I showed you how to go into the trade broker uh, look at the ones that are for sale if you want to do a preview and just see what a particular mask is going to look like on you before you consider getting one from the um, Halloween Guide in exchange for some of your candies. And, and that's it. It's, it's a pretty simple one. Uh, I don't really spend as much time farming this one like I do some of the other ones. Uh, but it is kind of fun to play, and I do play it once in a while. Mainly on just my main characters. There's not enough uh, major stuff for me to play my other characters on. But I hope everyone enjoys the event. Hopefully the video helped you out. And uh, until next time, enjoy Terra and happy gaming.